Whether you're on Windows XP or Mac OS X, the key to running a reliable and stable Nuendo system is to ensure that it's set up and configured properly before you dig in deep. In this tutorial, we'll guide you through the necessary steps to ensure that Nuendo is set up and ready to go for the tasks at hand. Before we begin this tutorial, it's important to note that as you're configuring Nuendo or making changes to your preferences and options, if you're ever unsure of what something does, you will always find a help button in whichever configuration window you are in. This automatically brings up a help menu that tells you exactly what each option does within the window you're looking at. This makes it extremely easy to get your answers without having to search through the entire manual to find what you're looking for. The first step in configuring Nuendo is setting up your audio interface. This is probably the single most important part of ensuring a stable and reliable environment for Nuendo. The first thing to do is to make sure you have the latest software drivers for your audio interface installed on your system. Working with incorrect or out-of-date drivers can cause lots of problems. Make sure to keep an eye out for updates that either fix known problems or sometimes even increase performance and stability. Once your audio interface is installed, you'll use the device setup window to configure Nuendo to use this audio interface. You'll find this in the main device menu. Once open, simply choose the VST multi-track category and a list of options will appear to help you get Nuendo working with your audio interface. The first step is to choose the correct drivers. Nuendo provides support for ASIO on Windows and Core Audio on the Mac. On Windows, you have several ASIO options available. However, it is always best to choose the ASIO driver that is specific to your audio interface. You can usually tell the right one by looking for the name ASIO along with your audio interface's specific name. Using the DirectX or Multimedia ASIO options usually results in poor performance. Once selected, you'll see a latency amount calculated for you. This will tell you approximately how fast your system will respond to transport commands, plug-in changes, and real-time virtual instrument playing. This is based on the buffer size you have set in your audio interface options. If you're not sure how to do this, then make sure to check with the manufacturer of your audio interface. The next option to release ASIO driver in background is used to allow Nuendo to release a driver if it's placed in the background. This allows other applications to use the audio interface while Nuendo is running. However, in my experience, this can cause problems, and I recommend to generally leave it off. I also recommend against running any other programs while running Nuendo. The only time this is feasible is if your audio interface actually supports multiple application use and can handle more than one program using it at the same time. Next, the direct monitoring option provides you with zero latency monitoring. This option is available only if your audio interface supports direct monitoring. The Expert button provides you with some additional options to fine-tune your system. Generally, you don't have to make any changes to these options. However, they can be useful if you're experiencing any problems. For example, the audio priority is probably the most important of them all, giving you the ability to fine-tune Nuendo to place more priority on the audio engine, the MIDI engine, or a balance of both. The multiprocessor option is automatically enabled if Nuendo detects a multiprocessor system. However, you have the option to disable this in case you have any problems with plugins causing stability issues or simply not working within a multiprocessor setup. If you're on the Mac in OS X, you'll see similar options as well. The only difference is you have the ability to set your buffer size directly from within Nuendo rather than from your audio interface's control panel. One important note about the Mac in OS X is, OS X provides you with a comprehensive audio and MIDI setup utility that is included with every installation of OS X. However, the audio settings in this utility have no bearing or effect on your settings in Nuendo. Nuendo will use its own configuration information and simply pays no attention to what you have set up for your OS. So keep this in mind, if you ever need to make changes to your OS settings, they will not affect Nuendo in any way. However, 
it is important that you configure your MIDI interface properly within OS X's utility, as this will determine whether the interface shows up properly within Nuendo. We'll get to the MIDI setup in just a minute. Now, after you've set up your audio drivers and ASIO options, it's time to set up Nuendo to use the actual inputs and outputs of your audio interface. This is covered within the VST Connections page, found in the Device menu as well. Here is where you can set up which inputs and which outputs are used on your audio interface for playback and recording. In the Inputs tab, you can create input channels, name them as you see fit, and then choose which physical port on your audio interface will be used to correspond with this channel. You can do the exact same thing for your outputs. You also have preset bus configurations, which include both mono stereo configurations and configurations for all types of surround output formats. An important note to remember, these options are saved and recalled per project. This works great for those times where you need to create customized I.O. setups for a particular project. Each time you load that project, your VST connection settings are recalled accordingly. Now let's move back to the device setup page to learn more about setting up the MIDI system within Nuendo. Before attempting to use MIDI with Nuendo, it's important that you take the same steps that you took with your audio interface and make sure you have the latest drivers for your MIDI interface installed. MIDI setup on Windows differs slightly from OS X setup. Nuendo for Windows supports both direct music and Windows MIDI drivers. You'll have the option to set up either your direct music ports or the Windows MIDI ports. If you're not sure which one to set up, then consult the manufacturer of your MIDI interface. Steinberg support can also help you determine which one is best to use. On the OS X version of Nuendo, you'll only have MIDI system category in which to set up your interface. Despite these differences, you'll find that the options are the same for both platforms. In this setup area, you'll find the ability to rename your ports and choose which ports are visible within the MIDI track input-output selection. This is very helpful as it makes it easy to see what hardware devices the ports actually correspond to. To the right is a column that allows you to determine whether this entry will be shown in the master list whenever you choose an input or output port. For example, I have a Kurzweil SP76 as my controller in the studio, and I want to set this up as the first input port. Now I also have a Korg WaveStation SR rack set up on the first output port of my MIDI interface. So I'll go ahead and name that port as well. Next, I'll turn off all the other ports since we aren't using those. Now if we go to a MIDI track, you'll see that the available list for inputs and outputs corresponds to the way we set it up in our MIDI list. This makes a great way to configure your lists with less clutter and makes it easier to quickly see what you have in your studio. And once you do this, you never have to do it again, unless you reinstall Nuendo on your system. Moving back to the device setup page, you have two more option pages that will help you in your MIDI setup. The default MIDI ports lets you determine which ports will be automatically selected every time you create a new MIDI track. And the All MIDI Input section is where you can combine any number of inputs into a single entry that appears in your MIDI input list. It will show up as All MIDI Inputs. A good technique to follow is to set up the All MIDI Inputs as your main default input port. This will ensure that any time you create a MIDI track, it's already set up to receive data from every controller in your studio. This makes one less step you have to take when you're ready to call up an instrument and jam out. While we're in the device setup window, I want to go over a few other important areas you'll need to configure additional features found in Nuendo. First, your 9-pin device category allows you to set up and communicate to external video or audio playback devices using the Sony 9-pin format. The VST Input Outputs lets you determine whether certain channels on your audio interface 
will show up in your lists within the Nuendo mixer and the VST connections window. The video player lets you configure the size and format used to play back digital video files that you import into Nuendo for scoring or other audiovisual work. If you plan to use a real dedicated remote control hardware mixer to control Nuendo's mixer, clicking on the Add Remove button lets you choose from a large list of hardware controllers and digital mixers that support remote fader, automation, transports, and other controls to Nuendo. Last but not least, the VST System Link gives you setup options for using Steinberg's exciting new System Link technology. This allows you to synchronize multiple computers running Nuendo or Cubase SX to act and perform as one large system. You can find out more about how to use System Link in our VST System Link tutorial found in the synchronization topic. Now that you have the foundation of your audio and MIDI setup, you'll want to check over your preferences in Nuendo to see if there's anything you want to change. There are simply too many options to go over each category here. However, do note that none of these options will affect the stability or performance of Nuendo. These are all options to better customize the working environment for you. So I recommend you take 10 to 15 minutes and go through each category carefully. Use the help button to learn what each option does and then decide whether or not it makes sense to use that option. You only have to do this once, so it's best to do it in the beginning before you get into the thick of things. There are several other setup windows that we will discuss in further detail throughout this training course. I'll show you where each one is located and reference which movie tutorial you'll want to see to get more details about the options it provides. First is the key commands, which gives you the ability to customize every possible command in Nuendo and map them to specific keys, groups of keys, or macros. You can check out the Using Key Commands and Macros movie tutorial in the Advanced Uses and Tips topic to find out more about this extremely powerful tool. Next is your project setup window that gives you access to important options you should set every time you start a new project. You can learn more about these options in the project setup movie tutorial in the project management and setup topic. In the transport menu, you have two setup pages that you will want to check over. The metronome setup gives you options for customizing the click track with the new window and is further outlined for you in the Metronome and Tempo Options movie tutorial found in the synchronization topic. Next is the Sync Setup window that gives you advanced sync options for synchronizing external devices with the new window. This is covered in more detail within the Synchronization and Setup Options movie tutorial also found in the synchronization topic. As you can see, it's important to make sure you take the time to configure and set up all your options in Nuendo before you begin using it. Taking the time to do this in the beginning will ensure that you have a stable and enjoyable experience with Nuendo from the start.